welcome to another uh, edition of Reef Talk every Sunday. Uh, I'm Steve from Rotter Tube Reef, and then we have Scott from Mile High Reefers, and we have uh, Mike from um, 915 Mang on YouTube. On your tank, what are you using for your power heads, for your flow? What do you have? I'm trying to see. I can't really see. What do you got? I have a gyre. Okay. Um, oh, nice. And then on this side, I have the, uh, the J-Bow RW15. Um, my last video I did with the j I was I was going to throw it away, but um, I took it apart, and I saw it. I cleaned it, and good to go. How are you liking that max spec? Those look great. I like it that it's silent, but as far as um, if you get a little bit of coral line algae built up on it, you, you're gonna have to clean it because oh, really? the control, yeah, the controller it, it just does a red flash, and then and in, I'm talking not even covered in coral line. So hmm. wow, I like it. I like it that it has a feed mode, and I like that the starry eye blending can't uh, get up in there mm -hmm. because he likes to get bumps. Yep. Yeah, that's actually why I don't use the feed mode with my um, Jibo pumps is my blennies like to go in there. So right. I have to I turn them off manually because they have that auto start on them. <laughs> that way I can be sure nothing's in there before I start the pumps. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I use and my... For my cube, I'm sorry. For my cube, I have uh, just an MP40 that I had on this tank. Oh, okay. But it, was, it was so loud that I just... I have it turned down on my on my cube. That's weird that you... It's loud? Um mine you can't even tell that they're on at all um so and you tried to move them a little bit like yeah i had the spacing correct i I bought a new spacer from ecotech which yeah. was like 10 bucks just for that rubber thing um try getting rid of the spacers i don't use the spacers on mine and it's a much better connection and if it still vibrates just kind of move them around a little bit until they kind of like find their lock and you should be okay the spacer will will cause that. I got rid of mine. I use none, and it's a really s tight magnet. Try that. That's cool on that tank. And <clears throat> um, how long have you had that MP40 for? I got my MP40 shortly after I did my got my tank. I I went all out. Uh, I wish I didn't watch so many BRS videos because at the time, <laughs> yeah, no. Pushing reef keeper, reef keeper, reef keeper, and I was thinking apex, apex, and I just went yep. with the reef keeper. Uh, so I'm saving up for apex. Right. Yeah. That's cool. I like I like your tank in the back. Do you have? Uh, is it looks like a couple inch sand bed, so not too deep, just enough for kind it's of. A, like it's shelf. a forty pound bag of uh, sand. Okay. okay. Yeah. I like that tank. It's like perfect dimension. That's really cool. Thank you. It's what nice. are you using for lights? It looks like a nice big T5 setup, maybe. Yeah, I um, prior to this, I had uh, four ASO blues, um, and I got caught up in the hype. I wanted the full spectrum. I wanted all the different colors. Um, so I've got an ATI uh, T5 six bulb fixture, um, dimmable sun power dimmable. Oh, um, nice. I like that. It has one plug, and you just plug it in. You set the controls. What time you want the Tenix to sunrise, sundown, and so I might play around with the color bulb combination later on. Uh, haven't got my income tax yet, so yeah, right. I did, and guess where it went? An MP40 <laughs> and a protein skimmer and a protein skimmer. <laughs> and then now I'm done forever. <laughs> Till next week. Yeah, we'll see. So <clears throat> what? Um, so that you said that's in your in your kitchen, right? Right. Yeah, that's cool. I like that my, idea. My cube is like a couple of feet away. That's in my dining room, my living room. Yeah, that's cool. That's like the perfect spot. You want to have it where you can see it and enjoy it. That's why I didn't put mine in the basement because I'm not down there too much. You know, like whenever I get a 240, it'll probably have to go in the basement, right? Because Mm. Well, no, well, Scott, you've got your 210 above the basement, of course. So, yeah. And it's fine. I just don't want the floor to give out. And it won't, but, you know, it's just stuff you think about. Like, how much you know, further can I... You can always call a structural engineer and have them check it out for a small yeah, fee. Yeah, right. you got to find <laughs> someone who's good, though, you know? Not like someone who's from, like, a reef store. Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. 
crash. Yeah, thousand gallons, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So that was like the kitchen, great idea because you're always in there. It's like the heart of the house for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, mine's in when you walk in the front door. It's just right there. It's right there to greet you. And I got the couch right there. I lay on. And I just watch the tank. It's just right there. And when you walk past the house, you can see it from the front window we have right there on the porch. Um, yeah, but the basement, I don't know. I'd love to have it, but... I like how Scott has his basement because that's his man man cave. He has all oh, his yeah, sump stuff, great. equipment, yeah. pumps, frag mm -hmm. tanks. I, I love that. I wish I had one. The big thing about what I like about my setup is that it's a concrete floor with a floor drain in that room. So I don't have to worry about making a mess down there. Right. So the other day when I was doing my um, <clears throat> my cleanup crew, I could just take the cleanup crew out and then throw the bags on the ground next to the drain and not have to worry about making a mess at all when I was vacuuming stuff out. Who cares if water gets on the floor? Right. So if you got the option to have a floor drain available, it's well worth it. It It is awesome. I mean, I've got my quarantine tank in the basement on top of carpet, but three feet past that is the storage area, which is just all concrete. And when I was moving that Nasso from its bag and doing the whole quarantine thing, I did it in there, and I got a mess on the concrete, and there's water running, and there's a hole in the styrofoam box they put him in, so it's leaking all over. I didn't care because it was on concrete. So concrete is awesome for that reason, for working with. And then, of course, you know, I, then I'd have to, if I got the bigger tank downstairs, I'd have to do some, have a plumber come in and plumb some lines because I've got no running water in the basement. Yeah, um, five-gallon buckets up and down. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. I have so many buckets. That's too Yeah, much. see, with my system, I never carry a bucket. Yeah, well, you've got water plumbed down in the basement, right? Yeah, I had to do that. I mean, yeah, the see, pipes right. were there, so I had to cut into it and make it work. But exactly right. It wasn't bad. Yeah, just make sure you cut into the right one. <laughs> Actually, I had my dad do it. it. Made it really easy. Right, exactly. I'm terrible at soldering pipe. Yeah, so then it gets out of control. It's like, yeah, I'll get a 28 gallon nano cube. That's awesome. And then, well, maybe I'll get a 75. And then maybe I'll do this. And then all of a sudden, you become Scott, and you've got sumps in your basement and lines coming through the <laughs> ceiling. It's out of control. It's too much. <laughs> but it's easy. I don't know if you guys saw that Samuko. Uh, I gave him a shot on the last video. Uh, he where he turned his bathtub into like a platform to hold all his RODI water. No, I didn't see that. Wow, that's cool. He's probably is he single? I don't no, know. he's he's married, and I think he has a little kid somewhere. What? I've seen, yeah, check him out. He's a uh, he does a good. I like. Yeah, that. I've seen his videos. He has problems. Like that one. He's got an awesome wife then. Man, yeah, yeah. Part of my part that of how wouldn't I get away fly in my house. Is, part of how I get away with my system is it's in the furnace room, so my wife doesn't go down there. She has no plans for anything mm -hmm. in that room, so she doesn't even realize that it's all there. I mean, she knows about it, right. but it's out of her vision. Man, that's just too much. I just I have to draw the line. I don't. That's awesome, but I just don't think I can do that. That's just man. How many of you other guys? Put in comments. Who else has a a sump in your basement? I've seen videos on that, yeah. and oh, it's, it's uh, cool. But man, that's just. Uh, did you guys see the Leo Potts video? Where oh, that was painful. Was oh man, does the what? It's horrible. Leo Potts. He yeah. uh, he has like a fish room basement, and kind of like what happened. We we oh, all our yes. tanks are yeah yeah. These kids were like yeah. Dumping in there oh bottles of stuff that was horrible see that did you ever think about that scott i mean you know to be honest um i didn't think about my kid grabbing the stuff and dosing it um my kid kind of hangs out with me when i'm doing most of this stuff um i try to teach him about the tank and all that but i guess it is a real possibility he could do something like that <laughs> I don't dose a lot of chemicals, though. I mean, I use a calcium reactor and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I, it's definitely something to think about. I'm going to hold this guy. <laughs> I got to do a video with these guys. These are my number ones. Mike, do you have kids? Yeah, I have three kids. Your kids love three the kids, tank? Three dogs. 
Nice. Yeah, my well, my daughter she likes to tell me I spend too much money that I'm spending. <laughs> uh, my wife kind of put me on lockdown, but I'm gonna get some fish. I'm gonna get a doser. I'm gonna buy a test kit. I'm, gonna, I I'm starting to buy little, you know, little by little. You know, uh, my wife asked for a tank, so she's starting to get into this. Yeah, that's cool. As long as you throw some pink in here, purples, nah, <laughs> that's your coral. That's your coral. You know. Yeah, I. I've done that too. My wife, she's fine with it, but she said even last week, I hate this fish tank. And it's because, I don't know, it causes problems. But it's cool. You know, like my tank being in the kitchen, Thanksgiving, uh, See, Christmas, yeah, Christmas, right. Christmas, that, everybody's like, wow, you know, yep. that's that's pretty rewarding. Like us, we see it every single day. Right. Yep. We can, you know. So that's why we're always changing things. That's why we always have to get new coral, new equipment. So. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you, you got that right there in the kitchen, so a lot of people like it. I mean, it is nice. We kind of take it for granted a little bit sometimes, but when, like, neighborhood neighborhood kids come over, there's always a couple of them that absolutely love the tank, mm-hmm. and um, I love watching it. I work on it more than I watch it, but I do take the time to just sit and watch the guys for 10 or 15 minutes, which I should do more often, but, you know, we've got a little zoo here in the house, dogs first. I've been spending too much time on the the aquarium. I want to get it to the point where it's kind of set up and stable, which it pretty much is. But once that new protein skimmer is in there, I just I want to get it to the point. Video, where, man. Yeah, it's it. it's it. I want to get that to the point where it's kind of takes care of itself, which is why um, a little off the topic. I got away from all my mechanical filtration. It's gone. Um, <clears throat> Uh, in my sump, I used to have. Let's just talk about that for a second. What you guys have in your sump? Um, this would be like the third show, I guess. Um, yeah, works. Why not? So, um, I've got about. I got about ten minutes for me, but anyway, um, fifteen minutes. So in my sump, I've got um, coming off the main overflow. I've got the rotter tube. I got rid of my sump sock, um, and then after that. I just have that bio pellet reactor that I built. It's doing awesome. Nitrates are at zero. And um, that thing is just awesome. And uh, what else do I have? Foam block is gone. There's no mechanical filtration at all, um, except for that rotter tube. Uh, it's a pre-filter. And um, that's it. I have an eShop's 120 skimmer in there, which is rated for 120-gallon tank. I have a 125. So you should always get a protein skimmer that's rated for higher than your tank that was running on my 75-gallon, and it was running good. So I picked up <clears throat> an eShop's S200, which is rated up for a 250-gallon. So oh, that's, that's cool. going to be stay with eShop's. You know, I did. Man, I'm telling you, I was there close. I was right there. I, I was going to press the button for a Reef Octopus at on BRS. And I just I, I researched so much, and then I just thought, well, I love my eShops. It pulls massive amounts of gunk. It foams like a crazy monster. Why don't I just get eShops again? No, I better get Reef Octopus because it's the best, and everybody loves so, it. Uh, so I'm like, damn, let me get an eShops. So I got the eShops. What did you say, Mike? I was saying um, that's the whole reason I went with the DC pump. Because when I bought the classic uh, NW200 Reef Octopus Skimmer, yeah. after a while it just was too loud. It, it hmm. kept overflowing on me. It, you know, I, did, I had to stick tape on the hmm. outputs and put like a pinhole. It, really? I never uh-huh. had issues with the eShops. I love them. And um, I know that it's like Reef Octopus and all the forms you go through. Reef Octopus, Reef Octopus. But... The 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 motor in the the pump in the uh, e shops is the what is it the Italian one um, the CJS C- C- yes it's got that Reef Octopus does not um, man I'm telling I can't even t- I can't even tell if my e shops is on half the time I have to look at it and it's always on I can't hear it at all I think so, Vertex has CG I like them what I think the Vertex has a CG pump they do yeah. yeah. So, you know what? I'm not saying Reef Octopus is bad. Not at all. I've never owned one, and I know they do an awesome job. I just stuck with what I know. So, anyway, I got to the real raw basics. Um, More powerful protein skimmer to get those nutrients out. Um, No foam blocks. 
no mechanical filtration except a small pre-filter. Trying to keep it as natural as possible. My water is clear. I'm going to rely on my protein skimmer to get that garbage out of the water. Um, and that's it. It's less stuff to harbor the nitrates, right? Just get it out of there. There's nothing in my sump. So that's what I've got going on. Um, what about you guys? Yeah, Mike, why don't you go next? Tell us what you got under your tank. Um, I just have a, I have a main drain. And then in the overflow, I have an emergency drain. So it's two drains. Um, before I used to have uh, dual drains, and that was just too loud because I figured I only need one drain and keep an emergency drain. Uh, I my sump is pretty simple. I have a RLS. Um, I think it's the eight uh, protein skimmer. Uh, it's a DC pump. I like it because it has like a little feed mode. I don't actually use it to feed, but okay. I use it to uh, so I can collect the collection cup. Um, then I have uh, Chato, and I recently added about four or five mangrove trees with some oh, like nice. uh what's that stuff called ceramic um things and then it goes straight into my uh return pump i have one reactor gfo and uh carbon um for i tried the uh bio pellets uh for me i, I didn't like it I know you guys are running bio pellets. Yep. I just started because of Scott, so if my tank crashes, you know who is going to be I swear by him. I swear by him. I used to sugar dose, and Scott's like, no, you got to do bio pellets. You hey, want to be nitrates at today? You got to be cool. So I'm like, all right, let me just try it. What are your nitrates at today? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so when you said you're running in one reactor with GFO and carbon, are you mixing? No, I have the GIF on the bottom so it can do the tumble and have a carbon on it. Oh, okay. So you're splitting them like with foam blocks. Yeah. Okay, it's, cool. It's the BRS Deluxe. Nice. Very That's cool. cool. Nice. So what are you doing for like calcium dosing and stuff like that? Myself, um, that's why I'm buying a test kit. I had an old Red Sea test kit. Uh, I hardly used it, and it's expired now, so I'm going to get a new one. And uh, I'm not dosing anything because... Well, what do you think I'm, about those Hannah checkers? Have you thought about those? I think I might want to get one. What do you think? Um, actually, my buddy Tim, uh, he gave me uh, alkalinity Hannah and I think a phosphate Hannah for free because he, nice. he didn't like them. Uh, I haven't used them yet. I need to buy the reagents to refill them, but... I'm going to give it a try. I think I'm going to get the alkalinity one. I just... I hate... I got the Red Sea test kit. It's, mm -hmm. it's great, but man, it's like... I always have to read the instructions every time because there's a lot involved in it. Nice. So, under my tank, I'm um, running through the drain with a rotter tube, and I've just experimented with putting my carbon in the rotter tube. The idea behind that being that um, carbon's only good for a brief period of time, four or five days. So basically every time I clean out the rotter tube, I'm putting a new little bag of carbon in there. So it's a fast, easy way to change that carbon out more often and hopefully keep the nasties down in my tank. <clears throat> I know Steve's going to disagree with the amount of carbon we should be using, but um, I'm trying this in the rotter tube, and I think it's going to work pretty good for me. So from there, I've got my big, it's like a sheep tank that I'm using for a sump. Things... um six feet by two <clears throat> feet when you say like a that. sheep tank you mean yeah it's literally like a stock tank that a sheep would drink out of on a farm yeah i like those. literally it says sheep tank on it so uh, yeah there's like no mechanical filtration i've got a piece of egg crate to keep the um algaes and stuff and the refugium from going into the main return and that's actually working really well. It's actually really cool because the algaes build up on there and create like a natural mechanical filtration. So that's actually working out really well. Oh, here's and something then, I wanted to ask you. Scott, what kind of a crazy pump are you using from that going to go upstairs back to your tank from the basement to upstairs? I've got a Panworld pump. I don't remember the name. It's the second biggest one they have. My problem is, is I need a bigger pump for everything I'm doing. Um, I got an Aqua C EV1000 skimmer, and it takes a massive pump to run that. In fact, the Panworld pump I have is what they recommend just to run the skimmer. Yeah. 
Um, so I need to upgrade to a really big prompt. Um, there's a high pressure reflow that looks pretty good, but it's like 450 bucks. I don't have that kind of cash laying around right now to throw at the tank, but I need something better. Um, yeah, I run one pump to run my skimmer, um, up to my frag tanks, right? And then that same pump runs up to the display. So that pump does a lot of work. Um, it was fine when I first designed the system, but where I'm at now, um, I need a bigger pump. So whenever the funds are available, I'll be definitely looking into that. 